You're watching Talking Points, a focus on the political scene in Lubbock and across the South Plains. Welcome back. Here's a look at some of the political headlines of the past week. I am staying away from Mueller Report News because it's frankly been talked about everywhere since its release, although I'd encourage all of you to read it. Lubbock Congressman Jody Arrington is scheduled to be with us next week. I'll talk to him about it. In the meantime, Mr. Arrington released a statement on the report saying in part the special counsel investigation was thorough, the administration was transparent, the conclusions were definitive, there was no collusion, corroboration, or obstruction on behalf of the president or his campaign. Meanwhile, Lubbock City leaders say they're making progress in their quest to clean up the old recycling facility. It was abandoned more than 15 years ago, not hard to spot, near I-27 in the airport, 100 acres of land covered with three feet of trash. City asking for this $11 million from the state to help clean it up. There may be asbestos there, so the money would be used to haul it all away to a landfill specified by the Texas Commission on Environmental Quality. An official word this week that both Lubbock's police chief and fire chief will be retiring from their jobs soon. Police Chief Greg Stevens worked for the Lubbock Police Department for 27 years and will likely be the new chief in Rockport next. Fire Chief Lance Phelps retiring after more than 32 years of service in the city. City Manager Jared Atkinson expects to announce a new fire chief in a couple of weeks, but replacing the police chief may take longer. On high ethics, that will absolutely lead to the transparency. There, there, there's no reason not to be. That, that's a change. You know, 20 years ago, 25 years ago, when I got in the business, we didn't talk. We've got to talk. We've got to tell people what we're doing. And we've got to have a dedication, and that dedication needs to be at least equal to the two gentlemen that we have today. State lawmakers are discussing a bill meant to help adults who were victims of sexual abuse when they were children. It often takes those folks a long time to talk about what happened to them. And as KMAX Nicolette Perdomo found out, a new bill would give them more time to file a lawsuit. House Bill 3809 would give victims of sexual abuse more time to step forward. In 2016, there were 65,000 minors sexually molested. Currently, there's a 15-year statute of limitations, which seems like a long time, but obviously this has not proven to be adequate. So if a child is too scared, the bill would let them report the crime and even sue those responsible as adults. The notion behind it and intuitively, I think, is, is giving the victims a voice, is allowing the victims to, to speak loudly and clearly in the public arena and name that person and, and in an attempt to hold them accountable. It's very important to give families and victims time to heal and decide what they want to do. If passed, the bill would give them 30 years to decide. That's sending a pretty big message to um, supporting victims of a violent crime, especially children of sexual assault. So, um, you know, doubling that, that time that they're allowed speaks volumes. If this bill becomes law, it would go into effect in September. Nicolette Perdomo, KMAC News. All right, Nicolette, thank you. Another bill that can mean so much to assault victims comes from the family of Holly Jeffcoat and Holly's cousin, Stets Bryant, who helped put together Senate Bill 194 called Holly's Bill, and he joins us today with more on that. Good to see you. Thank you for having me. You know, Holly's story, I think, affected everyone when it happened. If you could take a second and remind some folks of what happened to Holly, what, three years ago now? It got just, just about, I believe, the three-year anniversary was back in February. Wow. And so uh, I actually didn't know Holly. Mm -hmm. I, did, I had no knowledge of our relation together, and I was working on a research paper for my English class, and I saw her story on the news, and it was about a month or two later that I actually figured out we were related. And so Holly, she was an 18-year-old girl with special needs. She actually had the mentality of someone about a third of that age, six mm -hmm. years old. Uh, she was raped every day after school uh, out in the middle of the country by her stepfather, and when she became pregnant she reported it to a counselor and he found out about it and murdered her mutilated her mm. it, just, it was just so awful when uh, did you realize though that there were areas that are reflected now in the bill that needed to be addressed for assault victims uh, and for authorities frankly trying to prosecute folks for crimes similar to what happened to Holly I realized it very soon when I figured out that Holly tried to tell someone yeah. and nothing happened that is when I figured, that is where I uh, determined personally that something needed to be done uh, as far as sexual assault goes. Because when one out of every three women in our communities and even in our, throughout our country are fall victim of sexual assault, then that's kind of, that kind of turns into an epidemic. And it's not one that should go ignored as it has been in society today recently. Sure. Now take us through exactly what all is part of Holly's bill 
uh, as it was presented there in the Senate. So actually, Senate Bill 194 covers about a fraction of Holly's bill. That's what we've been coining the start of, uh, of Holly's bill. And so what Senate 194 talks about is establishing a sexual assault as an indecent offense, uh, and it also uh, allows victims to take out protective orders against the people who assaulted them. Now, as far as what that offense entails, it entails groping without consent, uh, trying to pursue a woman without her consent, uh, et cetera, et cetera. So, uh, as far as sexual acts that, uh, as far as sexual acts that many people find common as just flirtations, we the bill would establish those as no, this is sexual assault, especially if that woman is saying no. Interesting. All right. So, what else would you like to eventually see be, be part of this, or in a separate separate bill? Right. Well, as you know, Senate bill the Senate bill itself was filed by Senator Charles Perry, co-authored by uh, Carol Alvarado from Houston, or I should say, authored by Charles Perry. Pardon me. Uh, and the companion version, the House Bill 309, was. Uh, authored by Representative Joe Moody out of El Paso. And so the bill itself, uh, Holly's bill, we should expect to see throughout my conversations with Senator Perry the entirety of Holly's bill to be uh, passed within the next three legislative sessions here in nice. Texas. Now, as far as what Holly's bill entails, we have to mandate sex education classes in high schools and universities right. throughout the state. We also need to make sure that we increase access to health care for people who are sexually assaulted and are injured or uh, uh, contract an STD, for instance. Gotcha. We have to make sure that they have those resources. And what we would like to also see is sexual assault research, resource centers and women's health clinics in every county throughout the state or at least a county where there is a hospital at. And so those are only some, but we also need to reform our criminal justice system to where we harshen the penalties for repeat offenders and those who, especially those who commit assaults on those with special needs. All right, so step one coming now uh, here with, with the, the, the bills that we talked about. Yes. Folks see this now and they want to do something to help Holly's bill, mm -hmm. and both the and the companion bill, get through the House. Now, what can they do? Now, the Senate bill itself, Senate Bill 194, it passed committee with unanimous support. It right. passed the entire Texas State Senate with mm -hmm. unanimous support, which I couldn't be more blessed on. Um, the companion bill, House Bill 309, that passed the House committee with unanimous support. So if they want that same result that we found in the Senate, all they have to do is contact their state representative and say, this is what needs to happen, mm -hmm. and this is why. Awesome. You know, I, I know you've done a lot of work uh, for political uh, course, work yes. for the Democratic Party right. and the efforts in this region, but you work with a Republican senator on this. I'm not afraid to do Tell so. Tell me what that's been like. Charles Perry, he's a good friend of mine. I was actually raised Republican, and I knew him back in the days when I, back when I was on the dark side. <laughs> uh, <laughs> he, he's actually a good friend of mine. I remember him coming to my Christmas band concert when I was in the eighth grade. Mm -hmm. I remember going out to eat dinner with him, or excuse me, lunch at Cotton Patch Cafe. I sure. believe we even went to church at Southcrest together. Just because of the letter next to someone's name doesn't mean you can. Uh, that it, it, it doesn't automatic. It doesn't automatically make you enemies. Sure. If you can work with someone, especially on an issue that shouldn't be a political one, such as sexual assault, then by all means you have to do so. We need more of that. I think in this day and age, I agree. for sure. I agree. <laughs> That's Brian. Thanks so much for the work you're doing, and best of luck. We hope everything gets passed through, and we make a real difference here. Absolutely. Thank you. And straight ahead, think you'd like to get involved with city government in some capacity. Good place to start when you visit the Lubbock City Secretary's office. We'll meet the boss next on Talking Points. It's the one day.